Welcome to College Park, everyone. And a happy new year to you for 1982 from all of us here at Metro Sports. I'm Jim Thacker with Billy Packer. And Bill, what a Metro Sports doubleheader we have tonight. The two top-ranked teams in the country right here in the nation's capital area. And against some real tough opponents from a standpoint of teams hard to play on these kind of courts. Maryland, of course, hosting North Carolina, the number one team. And number two, Virginia, later tonight, will be taking on another team across town at uh, Landover. And they're Notre playing, Dame. of course, uh, Notre Dame. And Digger Phelps is the kind of guy that likes to put together a specific game plan to knock off big people, as was the case in the Kentucky game. Bill, North Carolina's had a great December. This will be their first conference action. Maryland's struggling a little bit. Well, I think that uh, North Carolina's play in December, Jim, considering the schedule and the difficulty of that schedule, is the finest December of any team I can remember in modern basketball history. As far as Maryland's concerned, there's no question about it. Their club's in a lot of trouble. They do not have the talent they've had in years past, and I really don't know whether they can hold the ball or not. That's something they'll, they might try to do tonight. All right, we'll see how left him has them prepared, and we'll be back for our scouting report for tonight's game in just a moment after this message. All right, very still, very still. Red nation over that Kentucky game, but they have been awesome inside, and James Worthy is one of the reasons, of course. How's he look to you? Well, I think he's uh, certainly one of the premier power forwards in the United States, handles the ball so well, really doesn't have any weakness in his game at all, and obviously he's recovered from that big injury he suffered two years ago. You say the key for Maryland is controlling the tempo. Does that mean Reggie Jackson has, the, has things on his shoulders? Well, that's very possible, Jim. Lefty likes to run. Lefty likes to play man-to-man. -man, but this club is not the kind of club that's going to be able to do that with any degree uh, this, this year. So a guy like Reggie with his experience, his ball-handling ability, could be a real key factor in that situation. All right, it'll be the kickoff for ACC action for the Tar Heels. And the opening lineups will be coming next in just a moment after this message. When you're coaxing up. At one forward position, Matt Doherty. And a forward spot for the University of Maryland, Adrian Branch. At the other forward spot for Carolina, James Worthy. And for Maryland, Herman Beale. At the center position for North Carolina, Sam Perkins. Interviewers for Ashley Maryland, Charlie Pittman. And one of the guard spots, freshman Michael Jordan. The other guard spot, a freshman Jeff Atkins. The other guard position, for North Carolina, Jimmy Black. And for Maryland, Reggie Jackson. University of North Carolina, coached by Dean Smith. Maryland by Lefty Grizzell. We'll be back with the start of tonight's game after this message. Perkins is six foot nine. Matt Doherty at six eight on the front line. There's their opening lineup. Jimmy Black, the playmaker, point guard. Jordan is listed the guard. Will play more like a forward, and Doherty will be play more like a guard. For the University of Maryland, they'll have the sensational freshman Adrian Branch at one forward at six eight, and Charlie Pittman at six eight in the center. That represents their height. Beals only six foot six. Jackson will be joined by Jeff Atkins, a high school All-American out of Martinsville, Virginia. At the guard spot as Drizelle tries to get some scoring punch. David Dodd, Joe Forte, and Larry Limbo assigned here by the Atlantic Coast Conference as the officials tonight. And you think maybe Maryland's chance may stand in trying to keep the running down a little bit, Bill? Well, they might do that, but of course, with a uh, fellow like Morley, you would assume that, uh, not starting, you would assume Maryland's going to come out and try to run with the game a little bit. Morley would be the guy in the ball game if they're going to really slow things down. Loose ball run down by Doherty. North Carolina, the visiting team, will attack first here against uh, Maryland. In the man for man, Worthy on the inside, hooking in close. What a play by James Worthy to get it started. I think the Tar Heels smile anytime they see somebody go straight man to man against them because Worthy and Perkins inside are something special. Branch driving and he draws the foul, blocking underneath by Michael Jordan, a freshman for North Carolina. So there's the first personal foul of the ball game against Jordan. Jim, this fella right here is one of the truly gifted young players in America, Adrian Branch. Pretty good block by Doherty from behind. I'm amazed that he got that ball, but there was a. Of course, a foul on Jimmy Black. As long as Adrian starts going to the basket like that, it's going to make him doubly tough because he has a good outside shot. Comes out of the great DeMatha School here in Hyattsville, not too far from the campus at College Park. And he's only 18 years old, Bill, so he has a lot of time.
to get better, and I'm sure he will. First point for Maryland. Two to one, North Carolina in the lead. Maryland pressing a little bit in backcourt with Jeff Atkins. That spreads the game out even more. At lefty may be taking the tactic. Carolina does not want to go all the way down in the bench. He may want to go ahead and force them to really work hard offensively early in the ballgame. They want to get it inside to Perkins or Worthy. That's Perkins. Beal's got his hands full with Worthy in there. Perkins. And a good rebound pulled down by Adrian Branch. Here comes the freshman for University of Maryland. Stolen away by Michael Jordan. Two of the fine freshmen involved in that play of the Atlantic Coast Conference season is underway for the nation's top-ranked team. Two to one, North Carolina in the lead. Still man for man for Maryland. I look for him to go into Worthy consistently right now with his matchup at Veal. Here's Perkins on the inside against Pittman. Driving Jordan. Dishes off to Perkins. Fadeaway jumper by a 6'11 center. 4-1, North Carolina goes to a three-point lead. Tar Heels matching up man for man, as they uh, usually do. They've got Doherty here assigned to Branch. You notice, Jim, how Perkins is going out much farther this year, much more comfortable defensively going out and playing his man, trying to force that ball to be moving. Merrill, of course, in their gold uniforms. They went to it in, uh, as a maneuver last year, and it paid off for them. They won a couple of big games. Last time, of course, in the conference tournament, they pulled off a big win over Virginia. But it didn't work the last time they played it for them. No, it really didn't, Jim. And, of course, you've got a screen there by Jackson inside. That really hurts you when you're Maryland because they've got to get some shots off. First foul against uh, Maryland. North Carolina here has won six out of the last seven. But Dean Smith recalled one big loss to Tar Heels suffered in 1959. When they came in here, the top-ranked team in the country, as they are tonight, they were upset by Maryland. Then coach by Bob Miller for turnover as here comes Jackson, dishing it off to Atkins. Good fast break by the University of Maryland. Really heads-up play defensively by Veal. Inside as he cut off the passing lane. Four to three. That turns on the crowd here, which is over 12,000 for this game. Maybe those yellow uniforms, Jim. Or gold, I don't know what really color you could call it. Back door, Jordan draws the foul on Branch. Boy, Jordan really pulled the string on his man on the far side. You really can't fault uh, Branch that much because he tried to switch off his man to pick up Jordan. But Jordan made a nifty move on the baseline. Michael Jordan had so much versatility to this lineup. A great one-on-one -on -one player. You saw a super backdoor move there. He really comes down hard. Might have been fortunate to hit Branch's leg a little bit coming down there to break the fall. The kid can shoot outside. He's a great driver with the ball. He's a team player. Has understood the concept at North Carolina and, and very quickly, sure to be an All-American player before he gets out of there. He's been working on his defense, which is steadily improving. He's hitting almost 58% in the field. How many great athletes have you, could you name out of Wilmington, North Carolina? Well, that town's produced them. Five, Old court pressure, Jim. Yep. Old Old court zone. Branch is able to get by Jimmy Black, and Maryland has it over the timeline. Now Maryland, North Carolina drops back in a 2-3 zone, or 2-1-2. Two, two. I think they want to see what lefty's going to do. Is lefty going to play against the zone, or is he going to hold the ball back out? Obviously, he has to He's gonna play. He has to play, but he does not have to shoot. He's trailing by two points, so Maryland has to initiate the action. Well, North Carolina's drop back in the zone. They'll try to test the outside shooting. And if they're going to go outside, they will want number 10 on the far side. Jeff Atkins perhaps to take the shot. And Pittman draws the foul on Black. And now Black violates a little bit of the theory there of the tight zone coming out. Well, they were just ready to switch back to man-to-man, -to -man, Jim. And as they had made their adjustments from the inside, everybody kind of goes back inside and then goes out and picks up their man. He was going to go and get in a man-to-man -man situation. Armand Dale trigger again, got off to a great start this year. They're in the man for man right now, a little bit of pressure. Uh, here's where they're tough, and the man spins his dribble. That was tapped in the backcourt by Jimmy Black. That's why Jeff Adkins can go back and get it for Maryland without a violation. Jimmy, Five to three, North Carolina leads. You've got to keep your dribble alive when you're playing against a defense that's going to overplay you as much as Carolina does. And a reach-in foul by Matt Doherty, number 44. Third team foul against the Tar Heels. Number one on Doherty. Our underrated player, Bill. Six foot eight, uh, starts at four, but plays like a guard. 
I really have to question that 6'8", but I don't have to question at all what you said, Jim. He's a very underrated basketball player. That 6'8 figure has come out of the woodwork somewhere. I think he's about, looks to me, be about 6'6", six, 6'6 six, six, six and a half, but he really knows how to play the game. Two-point lead by North Carolina. There, the overwhelming favor. All alone, Jackson for a layup. Why did he fool the defense and slip in from somewhere? What North Carolina tried to do there was double team out front. They made the quick double team jump and it didn't work because Jackson was smart enough to move without the ball. Score tie for the first time at five. We played four minutes here in the first half in Coldfield House. The nation's number one ranked team. North Carolina undefeated in nine games. Worthy, checked out by Beal. Worthy wants it back. There goes Worthy, a little short hook. No way to defense that. Jim schools out on that matchup. If they get the ball to Worthy Branch, I mean, Beal is playing right behind him, and James, of course, is awesome when he gets the ball down that low. I look for North Carolina to really go back to him. Here's the double team trap. Beal six foot six, Worthy six foot nine. Seven to five, North Carolina by two. Branch walks. That'll turn it over to North Carolina. And with 15 minutes and 19 seconds to go in the first half from College Park, Maryland, with the score, North Carolina 7. Minutes of the game are granted by the Atlantic Coast Conference to Metro Communications Incorporated. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast have been hired and are paid by Metro Communications Incorporated in consultation with the Atlantic Coast Conference. We played a little less than five minutes the first half. Outstanding crowd here of over 12,000 at Coldfield House. The University of North Carolina brings in the nation's top ranking in both major polls, number one against Maryland, a team that has been soundly trounced twice, UCLA and by North Carolina State. Let's see if they go to Worthy early. Right now he's away from the basket here being hard by Bill. There's a great drive by Perkins. And a push throw works. No, he was walking, yep. Jim, and what was so tough, Sam was so wide open that he took a little step and really lost the handle on the ball. Good call by the officials. Maryland will look to tie it again now. They're trailing by two. We've gone exactly five minutes in the first half. Fifteen minutes to go. Double teaming here on the trap. And Pittman beats him off the field. Oh, blocked, blocked inside by Worthy. And up it goes by Pittman. Take it away. We'll have a jump. A jump ball situation, that is. The ball will go out of bounds, of course, the University of Maryland. North Carolina control the opening tap, and under the new rule of all college basketball, a rule the ACC's had for a couple of years, they alternate possession on the jump ball or tie ball situations. Jim, most of the officials, coaches, and players alike think that by next year they're going to change that rule that the defense will get the ball. Good job by Pittman to run down the ball. Have two sensational blocks, one by Worthy, and then, of course, that one by Sam Perkins. Both guys have great leaping ability inside. Of course, Maryland was stripped of their great team by graduation or other losses from last year. And they come back to build around Pippen and a backcourt that really doesn't have much scoring punch. Back to Reggie Jackson, and Doherty was anticipating the play. Here comes North Carolina in the break. Jimmy Black Perkins will take it about 18-footer. That's some kind of play to hit from outside. What North Carolina is doing right now, Jim, they're trying to force the man with the ball as opposed to playing him straight up man-to-man. -man. They're trying to force him down in the corner so they can go ahead and get double teams. See what Jordan did? Right. Now the double team situation develops. Running into a double team. That was a foul on the James Worthy. He got switched off somehow on a guard, Reggie Jackson. First foul on Worthy, team foul number four oh, against Worthy. North Carolina. 9-5, the Tar Heels' biggest lead of four points with 13.53 to go in the first half. North Carolina staying man-to-man -man out of bounds. Now there's Jordan again trying to force Atkins into a trap down inside, giving him the baseline. Jimmy Black doing the same thing. They try to steer their men into double-team situations. Pittman lost his drill. Backdoor cut by Jackson. Good switch by Doherty to cut off the baseline. 9-5. North Carolina leads. Now they're playing very high, Bill. We may see some backdoor movement here. Well, of course you're going to see backdoor movement, which is what you've got to do, but North Carolina doing a good job weak, weak side defensively. Doherty is so smart in anticipation that they fill the hole real quickly. There goes Brad sweeping around. Kept alive by Pittman, but pulled up by Perkins. Here comes North Carolina. There's Michael Jordan. One of these times he's going to bite his tongue off. If you notice, he always has his tongue out when he's running down the court. 
Uh, he can bite off a lot of other things, too. A lot of action. Here comes Doherty. Whistles a pass inside. Knocked down by Pittman and Jackson on the break. High arch. Oh, good Reggie shot. Jackson. Reggie Jackson only shooting about 35% so far this year. That was a very smart move to pull up and take the jumper. 103rd consecutive game for Reggie Jackson play University of Maryland. 9-7, that cuts it to two, North Carolina on top. Now, same type of movement here against Maryland's man from that. Perkins hook on the baseline. Rebound, hauled in inside by France. You can tell Maryland just by instinct, Bill, they want to run, but it's just not there this year. Playing a pretty smart game so far tonight. They have not been awed by uh, North Carolina's reputation. They're being very solid in their offensive patterns, even though North Carolina so far has thrown about four different defenses at them. Well, they weathered that little storm of trapping pretty well. Very unusual to play a team that, that plays such an unorthodox defense as this because it's counter to what most people try to do. They just don't give you the baseline. Here's Branch inside a word that gets around him, but it's partially blocked, and Perkins pulls it down. North Carolina on the move. Doherty had beaten everyone down court. They didn't see him in time. 9-7 North Carolina. Perkins hooking up inside. No defense for that one. A sky hook by Perkins and sends North Carolina back on top by four. 11-7. Lefty hollering at Pittman telling him not to let him handle the ball inside because obviously once it gets in there, it's curtains. Well, it's very dangerous to front him too, Bill. Here goes Branch, foul from behind by Doherty. Doherty is very adept at trailing a player and being able to block the ball, but that time he got part of the arm, picked up his second personal foul. That's going to bring uh, Jeff Barlow in the lineup as a substitute. See, Branch beats Doherty, uses the double screen very well, and there's what you're talking about, Jim, coming back from behind. He got the ball, the hand's supposed to be part of the ball. I don't, I got a question I call a little bit. The key thing, though, is that that's not what you would consider normally to be solid defense. But from a team concept, the way North Carolina plays, it works very well. Adrian Branch, who probably was able to take a city bus over here to visit the campus, might have been able to walk from nearby Hyattsville, actually Largo, Maryland, but he went to DeMatha. Only the second to Matha player that was recruited by Lefty Grizzell, the first being Dutch Morley, also a member of this team. That's the second point tonight by Branch. Brought him in here to take over the spot that was played so well by Albert King. The tempo of the game right now is uh, in Maryland's favor. They've been able to withstand one of those early blitzes as hit them in the UCLA game. 11 to 9, Maryland has just cut it to 2 with 11 12 to go in the first half, and we'll be back with more ACC basketball after these messages from your local station. Independent Network News. Never lets his team get over as a confident, does he, Bill? Well, I think uh, Dean is a master psychologist, and of course he said Maryland has the talent. They do not have the talent they've had in the past, not to disagree with the brilliant coach, but uh, I think that their experience and the way they're playing tonight has really helped them a great deal. Bill Guthridge has been his assistant now for 15 years. There's Eddie Foger, who played for him, to his left, also on the staff. 11-9, North Carolina by two. A little mild passive pressure in backcourt here by Maryland. Isn't affecting the game. Perkins will bring it over. Now Flack will set the action against Maryland's man for man. Let's see if they go to Worthy, still being guarded by Herman Beal. There's Jimmy Braddock, who's coming with Barlow. This is Barlow, who replaced Doherty. Maryland playing pressure man. North Carolina with their uh, shuffle passing work. Looking for Worthy. Maryland doing a good job defensively. North Carolina, a very smart team, not panicking and putting up any bad shots. Here's Worthy on the turnaround. Six field goals for North Carolina. They're both, all six by Worthy and Perkins. Three apiece, and it's 13-9, Tar Heels by four. He's going to give Veal a real lesson defensively tonight. He's, of course, tough for anybody to guard, but more there than There goes Branch on a great move. Braddock tried to draw the charge, but Branch got off the shot. 13-11, Maryland back within two. Perkins cutting against the man for man. Rebound pulled down by Reggie Jackson with North Carolina up by a pair, 
As the shooting thus far, North Carolina's almost double the percentage. Here comes Beal working inside. Little short. And Worthy reels out of there with it onto the break with his team up by two. Stolen by Reggie Jackson. Jackson, right side. Branch nice layup. layup. Beautiful drive by Adrian Branch to tie the score at 13 apiece. You see the official, of course, Talon Baldwin, not to touch that ball when he comes out of the, the basket. But a great play that time by Adrian Vance, filling the lane. Jackson doing a good job on the break again. And Dean Smith has Michael Jordan and Matt Doherty back into the lineup. Lefty Rizal exhorting his team. Keep it moving here as Maryland's made its most impressive move so far against the top-ranked Tar Heels. We're just past the midway point in the first half, 9.25 to go. You think he's not a competitor? <laughs> I believe it. 22 years and 20 wins a year average. Inside, Michael Jordan spinning. There was a case where Jackson was there defensively doing a pretty good job. Now, Jordan passed that ball. Let's see if the official are going to give a two-shot foul. They shouldn't. He actually made a pass on the play, although he went up initially to intend to shoot. Now watch this. He actually passes the ball. Wisely, I think the official is going to give the ball out of bounds. Good play. No free throwing. That might be what Dean Smith is arguing about from his vantage point. They always say coaches have the worst seats in the house. He may have thought Jordan was going to shoot. Now he, in, he intended to shoot when he went up in the air, but uh, I think as time goes on, he'll realize when you get fouled, always go for the shot. There he is. Michael Jordan kept alive by Worthy, tipped out by Baldwin. Chance to lead. Three on two break. Jackson, right side. Good. Livio. And they're going to ask for goaltending instead of some offensive foul on Beal. Big turnaround there created by Sam Perkins block. And here comes the break. Maryland has been handling their break very well tonight. Jackson on the dish. Here comes Veal. Black holds his ground. Now watch Perkins go up there and get a piece. That ball had come off the glass. Black was there, I think. Hadn't it for the charge, had Bill, it, it would have been goal I definitely think so. The ball had hit the glass and was coming on down at an angle. But the foul took place first and, of course, canceled the basket. Lefty calling, of course, for the goaltending, but the personal foul nullified that. Bad pass over Chris Bruss out of bounds. Turnover to Maryland. High score, 13-13. Maryland's never led in the game. Twice North Carolina's been up by four. Psychologically, Jim, this is a big basket right here for Maryland for their fans to get them in a the ball game. They've been doing a pretty good job supporting this team so far. Big possession. Look inside by Jackson. He needed Baldwin to come and meet the ball. He stayed down on the baseline. Good job by Doherty on Branch. He isn't getting the ball off, and there he goes on Doherty. Beats him, left-hander. Rebound hauled off by Perkins. North Carolina back in control with a score tied at 13. 8-14 to go in the first half. Jackson matching up pretty good with Michael Jordan over there. Jackson has the best vertical jump of any of the Maryland players, and he is pretty strong physically, so obviously it's one of the tough guys Jordan has faced. Perkins trying to go on it for reverse and do the personal foul. They've got Worthy on the sidelines for a rest. And Perkins was trying to take control and did draw the personal foul. Dean Smith goes to that bench uh, very liberally, even though they're not the, as strong a bench as he's had in years past. But he keeps his guys fresh, and they all blend in there fairly well. That was the second foul against Adrian Branch of the University of Maryland. It'll send Sam Perkins who has divided the field goals thus far with James Worthy. They have three apiece, six field goals. Steve Rivers checks in for Maryland for the first time. Six-way sophomore from Brockville, New York. Brought him here as a point guard, but he's been shifted over to second guard very quick. And now he'll join Jeff Atkins in backcourt. So it's going to be a young backcourt for Maryland. And Perkins is on the line for two for North Carolina. You see, this, you see the stats, of course, on Sam Perkins. He does not take a lot of easy shots. So with his shot selection and ability to get that shot off, those are really some stats shooting-wise. Seven points for Perkins, who was the Atlantic Coast Conference Rookie of the Year a year ago. Latham, New York. 
Eight points for Perkins. North Carolina back on top by a pair, 15-13. Worthy returns. And with that, Lefty Grizzell brings back in Charlie Pittman. You see Worthy comes in, Perkins goes out. There's Jackson sitting down there. Now that matchup with Jackson on the bench puts either Atkins or Rivers on Jordan to look for Jordan to break loose against that matchup. Well, Reggie had three fouls, uh, Billy. I guess Lefty just figured he couldn't risk the fourth here in the first half. Eight minutes to go in this half. No, I think what Lefty's saying right now that that foul was not on Jackson. Yeah, Lefty's doing a good job right here. The foul was charged against Branch by the PA announcer. Let's see who the official scorer called the foul on because Jackson should only have two. Scoreboard had shown the third on Jackson. And now Eddie Folger is going to come up and argue North Carolina's case. The foul was on Beal. Lefty really did a job at the bench that time. Not only was it on Branch, not only was it on Jackson, but came up with Beal who hadn't had one at all. You saw that graphic, Jim, on Lefty Drizel. It, and left and lefty Drizel and Dean Smith in terms of active coaches with winning percentages. When you get up and over that 70% mark, you are really doing the job. Billy, between them, they've won 872 games. That's 20 of uh, 20 years, right? That is really something. And of course, in Lefty's years. case, he did it uh, at more than one school. You've got to give him credit for building two programs. At Davidson, he said it couldn't be done there, and he did it. Fumble by Pittman and Brust is down to get it and it's taken away by Jeff Atkins. Not a good pass by Brust. He should have just kept control of the ball. This is an important percentage. Maryland needs a basket to tie with 7.20 to go in the first half. It's 15-13. Maryland's been able to stay with top-ranked North Carolina through the first 12 and a half minutes. There's that double team situation. There goes Branch in close. Got the shot. Would not go. Worthy whips out the outlet pass to Braddock. North Carolina on the run. Leading by two. Here's Atkins on Jordan. Now let's see if Jordan doesn't try to use him a little bit. Worthy on ball. It goes around him. Got blocked partially in there. Brust gets it back for North Carolina. Good offensive rebound. Excellent. As I was talking about, the possession of the ball extremely important now. And for Brust, he just wanted to hang it back there for his ball club. There goes Worthy. What a move. Rebound on the floor. Jimmy Black will run it down for North Carolina. Oh, they'll get three whacks at it here. Looks like we're six and a half minutes to go in the first half. And a two-point lead, 15-13 over Maryland. That'll go backcourt and a turnover to Maryland. That was off Worthy's fingertips. Took his eye off the ball. I think James is ready to make a backdoor cut to screen away that time. And when he did, of course, the pass was coming. He wasn't ready for it. Time remaining in the first half, 621. There's the score. And with North Carolina leading Maryland, 15-13. Let's pause for these messages. 1980, 79-80, was able to get in a couple of wins. You Perkins know, on the floor. Excuse me, Bill. Jim, you notice you mentioned Perkins. You notice how Dean Smith uses Perkins and Worthy to spell each other at what would be considered the center spot. Then he brings them both back together. Here's the trapping defense again. Great feet inside, but Pittman walked. Why? Branch did a super job pulling the defense to him and then fed to Pittman. Pittman might have been a little bit too deep for that play. Well, Pittman should have put the ball on the floor. There was nobody in front of him at all. Here you see, remember earlier in the game, Carolina was shooting in the 70 percent. Maryland was down in the low 40s, and now it's uh, balancing out a little bit. Carolina really hasn't done a good job getting the ball to Worthy down in low. There's a nice back door. Back door Braddock, and there goes Jackson's third foul. So now Reggie may have to sit down. That takes a lot of defense out of the Maryland lineup. Here Braddock been around a long time at North Carolina, makes the good back door oh, cut. Reggie Jackson, Jackson kind of surprised a little bit. He's normally used to guarding a shooter or a bigger man. Jeff Atkins will replace uh, Jackson. Atkins started the ball game, had left for Steve Rivers, and now uh, he comes back on. Jimmy Braddock from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Highly recruited, though, when he came out of high school three years ago. He's played at nine games with 14 points and has 16 assists. He usually backs up Jimmy Black at point guard, but he's in there with Black now. 17-13 for the third time. North Carolina has a four-point lead. Just under six minutes, and this could be an important five and a half minutes for Maryland. Here's that. Here's the zone trap coming up right now. Doherty, a little slow getting there, but had the right idea. There goes Branch. 
Perkins wanting somebody to come back and take the ball from him. Good job by Atkins. Oh, Good Atkins, job. Super job. Denied the ball, but Black is able to recover it. Got it over the line in time. Uh, lefty wanted 10-second call, and I think he'd have had it, but I've, the officials kind of dropped off the count because they figured the ball was getting over half court. Great uh, job by Jimmy Black to run it down. North Carolina up by four. This is the biggest lead they've had so far. Now they're looking to get it to six. Worthy is posted on the left side against Beal again. Black walk, got away with it. Doherty trying to roll out. Perkins was intended for one. Here goes Perkins, baseline. Perkins hits for his 10th point of the half, and North Carolina leads by six. Now, great talent will eliminate some confusion every time. Maryland playing excellent defense on that exchange, and Perkins' ability to hit outside just uh, eliminated everything. North Carolina back into their double team pressure. Almost had a triple team situation that time, but with Worthy and Perkins back there patrolling the lane, it's hard to get anything cheap. Steve Rivers now with Braddock laying off him a little bit. Branch, who sometimes has a tendency to play out of control, has stayed pretty much in the discipline tonight. Here goes uh, Atkins, blocked by Perkins. Loose ball comes to Worthy. North Carolina's got it leading by four at nine, or uh, by six at 19-13. About four minutes to go in the first half. North Carolina, really a patient team, aren't they, Jim? They just uh, relax out there with the ball, threw that one away. Bad pass. Here goes Atkins driving. Rebound, Worthy fouls over the shoulder, James Worthy. Second foul by Worthy. North Carolina played Atkins pretty well, forced him to take sort of an off-balance shot, but Worthy in reaching for the rebound, guilty of fouling. His second. Worthy seems to get so many touch fouls going against the Bill. He was up so high in that particular rebound. We'll be back with more ACC basketball after these messages. Club playing a much smarter game tonight. They're taking uh, care of the ball when they have it. Their defense is much tougher and more tenacious. The shot selection much better. That was off the fingers of Steve Rivers. No, says the official. It was Michael Jordan. So it's still going to be Maryland's ball. I think in the UCLA game, they got blitzed at the very outset. That also changes the Well, they question. came down in that ball game and just threw up shots. Uh, not any rhyme or reason to them. Got in a lot of trouble there. Is that uh, yep. weak side the defense? Court pass. Good hustle by Herman Veal. Gets it back for Maryland. Maryland desperate needs for a basket right here. They're trailing by six. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Rivers in trouble on the double team. They all go baseline and pick up their dribble. If they're going baseline, they might as well take it down there, keep the dribble alive, go up for the jumper, or come back out the other side. They get in no man's land down there. Branch has done the best job of anybody going baseline and shooting. Rivers penetrating, comes off, the rebound by Worthy. Out the pass to Black, here come the Tar Heels. Black to Doherty. And Perkins on the follow, charges for a foul number one on him. And 17 fouls now against the Tar Heels. And we'll start the bonus here for Maryland with three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. Pretty big turnaround in that exchange. You have Doherty with a layup, misses. That's two down one way and coming back the other way with a one and one Doherty just lost the handle on the catch. And there was a good call by the official with Perkins coming over Branch's back. Adrian Branch, the free throw line. He's hit his last three, three out of four tonight. He has a little extra twist in that motion of his. Still a six-point lead for North Carolina, 19-13. This is the Tar Heels' first test in the ACC this year. Came to an outstanding December, 9-0, playing a rugged schedule. Jordan goes down, Doherty drives and dishes to Perkins for the open shot. Kept alive by Worthy. Oh, that was Jordan. And Jordan goes up and comes down and is tied. It'll be North Carolina's ball. Good he, fighting inside by Jordan and Atkins. He can get off the ground. That time I thought, just looking out there, Jim, it seemed like that must have had to be Perkins' hand up there, but it was Michael Jordan coming from the outside. Now sellout crowd here, 14,500. Full capacity at Coalfield House for this game. Last night, of course, uh, three Maryland players started for the New York Nets, New Jersey Nets, rather, and uh, played extremely well. So two nights in a row, they've had a big Maryland day in Washington. Great follow-up by Perkins for his 12th point. He's having an outstanding first half, 21 to 13. North Carolina now scored eight straight points since it was tied at 13 all. This is the biggest lead of the game. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go first half. And a timeout for Maryland. Boy, Atkins for a freshman. 
pretty quick on the trigger to get that time out. Smart call there by Lefty, of course, because he can see the game kind of getting away from his club. 2.20 to go. He did not want uh, to come down now and have somebody put up a bad shot. He wants to stay in this game through the halftime period. Eight points, the biggest lead. Lefty Drizel has won 427 games against Dean Smith, won 445. Watch Perkins. There's Perkins. Of course, nobody blocking him out. He came in from the baseline side, no question. I said he takes some hard shots. That one wasn't a tough one for him at all. We mentioned Maryland and uh, Virginia. Of course, they lead the polls, Bill, at number one and number two. Kentucky didn't slide that much after losing to North Carolina. The ball in Missouri. Uh, you've seen the Blue Demons. And the second five. And North whatsoever about shooting percentage and ability to go to the line because guys there are fellows that have high shooting percentages from the floor that aren't necessarily great pure shooters foul shooting is nothing but concentrating in great pure shooting technique so you could be a great foul shooter and yet have a lousy percentage from the floor because you just can't get a shot off that would be the case of a fellow like myself trying to play. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that's morally ever the first time for Maryland North Carolina in the zone a 1-3-1 one, one zone. They're just jumping out of trap a little bit. And now he picked up the dribble, Branch. And of course, what Dean did is change his defense right there, knowing that Lefty was going to try to set up for something specific, make sure he got a good shot. I'd be thinking right here, the Lefty, unless he gets just what he wants, will hang on. Great play. And he got what he wanted, Branch, on the baseline. Baseline drive by a freshman, Adrian Branch. 21-15 breaks a long drought by Maryland. Eight straight points have been scored by North Carolina. Now yeah, they're in the zone. That's right. Lefty goes into a zone of his own here. First time tonight, isn't it? And Dutch Morley in the ball game. A lot of weak side passing. Lobbed to Worthy. And now he hits the Jordan. Michael Jordan pulled down by Perkins for the foul. Gets the basket and the foul. Tremendous first half of offensive fireworks by Sam Perkins. That's his 14th point. Of course, when you go the zone, you really take a chance with a guy like Perkins. Look at him slip inside. Bad job that time by Branch. He, he should have put a body on him. Perkins went right around him, got inside. Going to have an opportunity for the three-pointer. Second foul against Herman Beal. Three-point play for Perkins would give him 15 points in this half. And he's only averaging 16 points a game on the season. Jim Sam certainly be an All-American here. Our half -time, Pepsi halftime show today, a look into the past. The guy was a great All-American University of North Carolina. Lee Schaffer played with the great Frank McGuire Club. He has a pretty good team in his own family. That's right. Here goes Morley breaking the press. Herman Beal clears it back to Morley. Now Branch. Branch doing a good job out there in the first half. I got to call an offensive foul. That was a good call. Branch uses arms to get a defensive player off him. Lefty isn't buying it at all. He's really hot. But for Adrian Branch picks up his third personal foul. Jim, he tried to split the double team. Nobody came to help him on it. He's going to have to sit down because Lefty doesn't want him to pick up that fourth one with just a minute to go. Hey, Branch. Baldwin coming in. Lefty is still shouting at the officials. Well, at the conclusion of this game, McDonald's will present a plaque to the outstanding player for each team selected by the announcers. In addition, McDonald's is pleased to make a contribution of $1,500 to the member institutions under an approved plan of the Atlantic Coast Conference. One minute to go in the half. Nine point lead by North Carolina, the biggest 24 15. Back to the man for man. Jimmy Black, top of the circle. Excellent play by Perkins, realizing he was being double teamed. Dean Smith would like to see Black shoot more. Of course, he didn't pass up that easy opportunity. Well, it's been a crucial five minutes for the University of Maryland. Five minutes to go in this half. They trailed by only four points. Now they're down by 11. 26-15 with 30 seconds to go in the half. North Carolina stays this time in a 2-1-2 zone. They've thrown about six or seven defenses at Maryland here in the first half. 20 seconds to go. Maryland might just take one shot at it here, try to cut it to nine to ensure they don't trail by more than 11 at the half. It's a smart play by Maryland. They've done a good job here in the first half. Didn't get blown out. Blocked out by Doherty. Let's see what happens right now. Here Dean Smith puts in two much bigger players. Doesn't want Worthy to pick up a cheap foul. Wants some size in there to make sure that on the missed shot, he's got the best rebounding potential to stop that tap-in. Justin Barlow are in. Atkins got to go for it. Seconds. There's Atkins firing off balance. Oh, hit it. Had it all the way. 
away. Jeff Adkins hits just ahead of the buzzer, and Maryland has cut it to nine on an exciting play to end the first half of our opening. You're the Western PA guy. Most people won't realize who your high school coach was, but uh, tell us a story about it. Well, I played for Press Maravich at Baldwin High School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Press went on, of course, to coach at North Carolina State, at Clemson, and at LSU. And also his son, the famous Pistol Pete, were all a part of my uh, high school uh, coach-player relationships. Lee, during your senior year, uh, I thought that your team that you played on might have been one of the best in the country. Our club had played Ohio State, the eventual national champion, and I really felt you fellas uh, were certainly in their class. But there was a different uh, pressure situation during those days. You had to win or you were gone forever. You had to win the tournament, and uh, that affected our team all my, all my years at North Carolina because uh, we always had uh, fine uh, preseason or regular season play. We were always ranked uh, in the top ten. But coming into that tournament, we knew we had to win to go on. And uh, as I reflect back on those days, we had in many ways probably a better team because we had more depth, but we didn't have the chemistry. And I was not able to duplicate uh, the chemistry that uh, Lenny Rosenbluth uh, contributed to that national championship team. Lee, you mentioned, of course, that uh, you had two coaches, one in high school, Press Maravich, who everybody knows down this part of the country. The other guy was Frank McGuire, who was the head coach during your career. Tell us a little bit about Frank. Well, Coach McGuire was just a big league professional type uh, person. And uh, he would have been a great pro coach because uh, he knew the uh, psychology of, of the game and the psychology of, the, of, the, of individuals. And he did very well with outstanding players. Did that prepare you in some ways to go on and play in the NBA where uh, most people might not remember you were Rookie of the Year? Well, I think, uh, yes, playing in a tough league and playing in a good program uh, prepared me for the NBA. The thing that I liked most about the NBA was the 24-second clock, and I was uh, uh, more of a transition-type player, so that game really suited uh, my aptitudes better than the college game where we saw a lot of zones. Lee, the, the players that you played with, the teams that you played with back in the late 50s, early 60s, were outstanding ball clubs. There's no question about it. What would happen if we could take those teams in the 60s and put them on the floor today in the ACC? We really couldn't play with today's players. The size and quickness right across the board in today's game uh, mean, makes the, ga the teams of 20 years ago, frankly, non-competitive. Fast Break Flashback is brought to you by Pepsi-Cola. Every three minutes, every business day, a Piedmont jet is taking off somewhere in America, flying non-stops where other airlines don't, flying no-change flights where other airlines don't, and many times flying around the hassles of big, busy airports. Piedmont, every three minutes, every day. No wonder they call us the up-and-coming airline. This man has a secret weapon. He sells Pilot Life Group insurance. His weapon, Pilot's Pace. It's an automated group claims evaluation system. It delivers instant, accurate information, provides faster claims settlement, gives Pilot the power to get checks on the way quicker, and give your company more dependable service. Pilots pace. No wonder we're a national leader in group insurance. I'm in a company pension plan and didn't think I could have an individual retirement. We'll have the ball possession. They're trailing here as we go to the second half by nine points. It's 26 to 17 in favor of North Carolina. They have a man match up with the Tar Heels. Jackson and back forward Jeff Atkins for Maryland. Pittman, Veal, and Branch on the front line. We'll get the North Carolina lineup for in a moment. Tim Jackson really had a good first half. He made both of the shots that he attempted and did a good job on Jordan, holding him scoreless. He also picked up three personal fouls, which may be a big negative factor for Maryland if they hopes of closing down this margin. 26-17, North Carolina. Jimmy Black, Michael Jordan, backcourt for North Carolina, Matt Doherty, Perkins and Worthy front line, stolen away by Black. Here comes Black on the first fast break for North Carolina against Jackson. With Beautiful pass. Back to Worthy for the layup of a foul. 
Beautiful teamwork of the fast break, and North Carolina, just like that, goes back to an 11-point lead. Jim, those were great touch passes inside on the fast break that time. Uh, knowing the man's coming, this is a very intelligent basketball team. See it right now. I thought Jimmy Black was going to try to go all the way. Hits Doherty. Look at that touch pass backwards on over there to Worthy. Got hit in the head. Made a heck of a shot there with his left hand. He and he and Perkins uh, can use that left hand. Perkins, of course, is a left hander. And there's Michael Jordan with that leaping ability. Jordan on the follow with his first field goal tonight. And North Carolina spurted to a 13-point lead here to start the second half. Lefty does not like to have a ball club be out rebounded. And here's North Carolina going on a blitz. Jimmy Black tried behind his ear, and it's picked off by Pittman. And this will be an open layup here for Branch. Very bad play by Jimmy Black and also a mental lapse by the North Carolina players not realizing somebody was behind him. There was no need to go down court without somebody back there for safety reserve. 30-19. Maryland cuts it back to 11. We are a minute and 15 seconds the second half. Worthy gets it out of danger to Doherty. Penetrating Doherty. North Carolina, very great discipline on their shots. Good fake by Do Perkins. Fake inside beautifully to Jordan. Uh, Jordan didn't do much in the first half, but he's off running here in the second half. 32-19. Problems for Lefty Drizel, the veteran coach for Maryland. His team now in a position where it might really fall off the pace. A foul by Worthy to try to break it up will be the third on James Worthy. Worthy a little upset with himself. He's been in foul trouble in some of the early ball games this year. He came from behind trying to do a little bit more defensively than he was in a position to get away with. First the second half. Lefty Maryland wanting his club to close this gap, but instead it's getting away from him. And of course, when you get in a game like this as low scoring as it is, Jim, a five or six point lead is like a 10 to 12 point lead because you're not in a run shoot atmosphere. We're two minutes into the second half and North Carolina leads by 13. Now they're in a zone. This is from the inbounds play. We'll see how long they stick to it. 2-1-2 two, two with Perkins playing in the middle. North Carolina basically plays two zones, a 1-3-1 set and then this 2-1-2. Uh, two, two. Atkins on the outside. Oh, this kid's a great uh, pure shooter. Remember he made the one he made there in the first half. 32-21, North Carolina. Our right, Hill's going for the 10th straight victory of the season. Maryland 7-3, and three, but they've been walloped their last couple of times out. Look at the screens inside. Lefty's wanting it, and Lefty did a heck of a job there. He saw the inside screens that Michael Jordan was setting. They were illegal. He brought it to the officials' attention, really got on their case, and they start looking inside and got it. That'll be the second personal foul on Michael Jordan and the second team foul against North Carolina. So Lefty knows there's one more than one card to play in this game. <laughs> and, of course, Dean Smith on the other side. You can see him right there up off the bench. He's wanting to go ahead and get his point in. That was a smart play by Adrian Branch. He was double teamed and trapped on the sidelines, and he just bounced the ball off the knee of one of the defenders out of bounds. That'll give Maryland a chance to put the ball back and play on the pass in. Here goes Branch, taking it in, and he's fouled. That could be James Worthy. He better watch it. He threw the ball four. back at the official. And a technical. It was just called on Worthy. Four fouls now, on Dean Worthy. Smith is on the court. He's going to get one. He better be real careful. Thank what you. happened to James Worthy fired the ball back at the official. Now, Dean Smith is upset. And he'll protect his ball player anyway. Even he, he's hot anyway, but he's doing this also from the effect that he wants to protect his player. And also remember that last move that Lefty made down in the other end where he brought the attention on the block. Well, Lefty just standing down the other end and enjoying the whole situation. I think the key thing here on that play was not the technical, but it was the fourth foul on James Worthy. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to sit down. He's got four personals. Of course, that technical doesn't uh, put him out of the ball game as his fifth. He's going to have to sit. He's really upset because he made a two-handed chest pass right at the official. You watch Dean try to get in his ball game now the rest of the way. 32-21, 11-point lead by North Carolina. Right now, Maryland's got a chance to cut in there. They could come up with three points, possibly, without giving up possession. Branch will get a free throw on the technical, and then Maryland will have possession. Branch really doing a job offensively out here tonight. He has not done a good job blocking out defensively, but on the offensive end, he's taking the ball to baseline really well. He really hasn't uh, been that effective at the free throw line. That's only three out of six. 
Morley coming in here to making sure which one of the technicals and which one of the personals, because I think Morley's probably going to be the guy selected uh, for the uh, technical foul. Brad's getting two free throws, being fouled for the shot, and now Dutch Morley will shoot the technical free throw. Morley, who's excellent free throw last year, hasn't been up that many times this year. He's 12 or 4 for 4, and now he's 5 for 5. Well, he's got a great percentage, but not many trips. So it could be a four point play now. They've gotten two uh, points on the free throws. That'll be Maryland's ball possession. They cut the lead to nine. Here goes Branch slipping by one man. North Carolina play. Out. Goes Branch out of the corner. He really has brought the crowd back into the ball game and really doing a good job. I think that the North Carolina players were mystified a little bit the fact that Branch went and put that shot up. Seven point lead by North Carolina. Maryland has trimmed six points over the Tar Heels. Big lead here in about a minute. A lot of time to go. Perkins will down his man, and he has fouled on the play. Foul will be against Baldwin. You can see what scouting does right there. Baldwin realizing Perkins wanting to use that left hand. Look at how much he overplayed him so he couldn't use the left hand coming back. Perkins being a smart player just wheeled to the inside for the shot. Perkins having an outstanding game. Jim, that's really a two-man defensive job. If you're going to have Baldwin overplaying so much to prevent Perkins from using the left hand, the guys from the other side of the court have got to come down on the baseline to take away what is a very easy move for him inside. 16 points for Perkins, which equals his season average per game. Now we have 17 minutes to go on this one. Perfect at the line. They cut five in a row. 34-25. North Carolina back up by nine. Morley needing up out of backcourt. Gets to Jeff Atkins. Stolen away by Black. Black lobs it to Jordan. Excellent pass by Jimmy Black. He realizes the tremendous athletic talent to Jordan, so he just laid it up in the air. And North Carolina now. Padding its lead again. Back up to 11. 36-25. Pressure. Double teaming defense on. Ball and feeds inside Atkins, batted away. North Carolina two on one. They got Jordan on the left side. Jordan can't handle it. Fumbled out of bounds and credit Dutch Morley's defense. Dutch Morley kept coming. It would have taken quite constant, quite a bit of concentration for Jordan to catch that ball. 16 minutes, 22 seconds to go. End the game. And Maryland wants timeout. So with a score, Maryland 25, North Carolina 36. We'll have more. Big play. As you saw, Black do it there defensively. 36-25, and North Carolina's up by 11. Reggie Jackson being hawked here by Doherty. Picked up the dribble, Jim. Now there's Jordan. He wasn't quite over in position uh, to go ahead and overplay Branch, but as time goes on, the freshman will learn his role there. A sticky man for man, although they don't expect Jackson to take the long shot, so they sag back to clock the middle when Jackson has the ball deep. Man's asking the Maryland players to put the shots up, but they've got to be patient because they don't have a lot of great one-on-one -on -one players this year. They need the good shot. There's Atkins. He may be the best shooter on the team. Jim, what he's going to see as time goes on, guys are going to get right in his face because he does not put the ball on the floor well to go ahead and drive to the basket. So they're going to take away that little one-handed jump shot of his. Nine-point lead by North Carolina. He had a great uh, career scoring in Virginia high school circles. Lefty really exhorting his team. Now Jimmy Black drives inside. Baldwin's got it for Maryland. Here come the Turks. A chance to get back within seven. Still over 15 minutes to go. Atkins oh. draws the foul from Black. Well, it was a good fake by Atkins. I, and Black I, was hopeless. I said he'd get in his face, but not quite uh, that way. They're going to force Atkins to put the ball on the floor and players around the league second time. You can expect to see this. Jimmy Black right there was going to come out on him quickly, force Atkins to put the ball down the floor. I think he should have got a two-shotter. Let's see that. No, nope, it's just going to be out of bounds. Nothing flagrant, I guess, or intentional. No, no, I didn't mean that. it that way. I meant he was trying to get the shot off. Almost had the release up. This is Herman Beal now looking for help. Pressure man for man defense by North Carolina. Ike has picked up his dribble. Branch now double teamed in the corner. Branch comes out of there, feeds on a great pass to Beal. Adrian Branch's ability to hang up there in the air made that play. 36-29 for the second time. Maryland moves within seven after trailing by 13. Less, uh, a little under 15 minutes remaining in the game. 
Man over man, aggressive defense being played by Maryland. Perkins fires over Baldwin. Perkins continues his spectacular shooting night for North Carolina. 38-29, up by nine go the heels. Remember Worthy sitting on the bench with four fouls that Dean Smith will probably keep him there for quite some time if he can keep a working margin. Chris Brush, Jeff Adkins, driving shot. And it'll be down with the ball, Perkins. There was a case again, Jim. North Carolina going to force Atkins to put the ball on the floor and have to go to the to the baseline or drive inside. <laughs> Passing game offense. Yep. Atkins looks like he needs a rest, Bill. 38-29, 14 minutes to go. North Carolina by nine. Well, they shift gears so quickly. They'll play racehorse and they'll come back with a patient passing game. Really working Maryland's defense right here. Looking for Sam Perkins. Yep, there he goes. Little short hook. Baldwin hit him. Baldwin's almost exhausted out there right now. He's been working hard to try to keep the ball away from Perkins. Watch him bend over and grab his pants. <laughs> he yep. is tired. That's a certain tip off. Second foul by Taylor Baldwin. Well, he was born in Bombay, India. If you've ever been over there, you come to a climate like this, you freeze to death. <laughs> well, he was working hard and is working hard all night. Has been all night uh, working hard. But Sam Perkins is such a methodical, great player. He just takes his time. He's, this fella has the whole package. 19 points. Perkins will be going for his 20th here of the game. Well, he's been like a machine tonight. At the line, he's six for six. Has seven field goals. What was he at the half? He had himself seven rebounds, 15 points. Six for 10. Three for three from the line. So he must be seven for 11. Well, maybe he's seven for 12 <laughs> at the very worst, 40-29. There's the full court trap with Braddock and Black back there now. I would imagine people who watch North Carolina for the first time say, gee, they're not really playing much defense. They don't realize all the weak side help that comes out there. They play excellent defense. You can tell that by the scores of the game. Well, a lot of the changing defenses, Bill, I think keeps you all stride uh, more than anything. Final scores, Wake Forest 44, John Hopkins 21, and Duke defeated Rutgers 28-15. Somebody was holding it. Big win for Duke. A very good win. Rutgers has played extremely well this year. They're the only club that had beaten St. John's. Of course, they gave North Carolina a good ball game for the first half. Well, Tommy Young, a former... Uh, wait a minute, Bill. They're not final scores. Thank this goodness. game's still in progress the second half. Thank goodness that 15 points is not all that Rutgers got. Tommy Young, the coach at Rutgers, a former Maryland alumnus. Uh, outstanding coach up there. And also coached here, I think, with Bud Milliken. 40-29 the score, 11-point lead by North Carolina. They've led by 13 a couple of times. The score here would give them a 13 point lead once more. Jimmy Black setting up pretty close to an illegal screen for Brush that time. North Carolina coming out of their box offense. Now they got Perkins posted low. Good fake by Dorney. Dishes to Perkins. Batted away by Adkins. Made a gallant effort to save the ball. And uh, luckily he isn't hurt. Jim, I made an appraisal on Atkins saying that they're going to force him to drive. Something that I think that people will do to Doherty as the year goes on. He likes to drive, but then always dish off as opposed to putting the shot up. And people will start planning for the pass as opposed to the shot. You have to have that threat of the shot to keep the defense honest. Doherty to Perkins and close. Forget it. Perkins having an outstanding night. 23 points. 42-29. Again, North Carolina's matched its biggest lead. 13 points. Jackson it. palmed it over, carried it. A turnover to North Carolina. And a good job by Michael Jordan defensively on Jackson to prevent him from being able to go inside. 12 minutes and 19 seconds to go. North Carolina moving into strong command once more on the scoreboard, leading 42-29. And in possession, Chris Brust still on the floor in place of James Worthy, who's sat down with four personal fouls. Zone, zone defense, yep. Yep, zone defense by Maryland. Left to tell, trying to stop Perkins some way, put Pittman back into the game and went into his zone, trying to get a little help inside. And see if they go outside with Jordan or Black. Doherty driving across for his right hand. There's the shot. That keeps the defense on us. 
First basket by Matt Doherty. 44-29, biggest lead by North Carolina, and Lefty says hold it again. So another timeout for Maryland with 11.47 to go in the game. And with the score, North Carolina 44, Maryland 29. Let's pause for these messages. Houston Tower, Big In that backcourt offensively. But this is a different type of North Carolina team. Foul in backcourt. That's going to be on Michael Jordan. Be his third personal foul. Immediately following this game over most of these stations, you'll see Notre Dame versus second rank University of Virginia and Ralph Sampson, player of the year last year. That'll be most of these stations here on the Metro Sports Network. And uh, the way this game's going, it looks like uh, North Carolina is going to win. And. Uh, it should be uh, an interesting game for Virginia tonight. I think Digger Phelps probably sets up as good a game strategy as any coach in the country to beat a specific team, so Virginia will have their hands full. But uh, that would set up a matchup if they were to win with number one and two going against each other Saturday. Aram Herman Field on the turnover. Michael Jordan's got it for North Carolina. 44-29, the Tar Heels, number one in the country leading, and Virginia ranked number two coming up against Notre Dame. Quite an evening of basketball. Dean Smith has uh, kept James Worthy on that bench with the four fouls for quite some time. Oh, he's so good at this passing game. He can eat up a lot of clock uh, if that's what he wishes to do, Bill. Well, I think now they're just looking for the high percentage shot. That means uh, Jackson Perkins. Up for a yeah, Jackson doing a, a, a real job on Jordan as opposed to when Atkins was on him. Jordan kind of broke loose there in the start of the first half. There he goes, and good job again yep. by Jackson. Out of the way. Maryland's got it with a three on two. Brass keeps on the left side, and he's cut off. You got to get the ball back to the middle. Good job by Doherty defensively that time. Realizing he didn't have help, he really protected the baseline well. Inside pass intended for Brands, picked off. They lob it to Doherty, and beautiful pass back to Black. Boy, Doherty just made a clever pass, realizing that Atkins was there to intercept or block. Total unselfish attitude on the ball club, obviously. 17 point lead. This is the biggest lead yet by North Carolina. Now they're moving away with 10 minutes to go. Jackson will not get the basket, picks up his fourth foul, and now North Carolina. Maybe putting this one away, although we got a lot of time to go, 10 minutes. You saw Dean Smith give the signal there for the passing game, the motion, as he sends Jeb Barlow back in the lineup. He was a walk-on last year. Doherty going to sit down. Uh, really did a fine job out there. He and Black sit down, and or he and uh, Jordan sit down, I mean, and Black back here now directing an offense with Braddock. Half a man pressure by University of Maryland. Here goes Barlow against the freshman Brant. Nobody forces up a tough shot. Great discipline by North Carolina. It's one of their trademarks. 46-29, North Carolina leads. Chris Bus, good head fake, gets the baseline. Jim, I think he fouled when he grabbed the arm trying to get that uh, move inside, but got away with it. Now, right down in the paint. The lead builds to 19 points. 48-29, North Carolina. Maryland now getting into dire straits. Inside Pittman. One of the few moves we've seen out of him tonight. Only his first basket of the ball game. 48-31. Pittman has really been shut off by North Carolina's inside defense. Atkins not going to be able to handle that quickness in the backcourt. Good job by Pittman. That's a charge by Jimmy Black. Third foul on Black. That'll turn the ball over. A ball might have been in the air there. If so, well, let's see. We're not quite at the moment. So it's only the 16 fouls. It'll just be possession for Maryland. They're trailing by 17 points with nine minutes to go. Dutch Morley will come in and give Reggie Jackson a little rest. He'll uh, team with Steve Rivers in backcourt. Jim, you notice how Dean Smith has changed his substitution philosophy. Remember when he used to put in five guys at a time, used to rest people. Now he rests guys. Now right here we have Jordan right back in the game with Doherty. They weren't out for much more than 30 seconds on the clock just to get that little breather. So he's changed his entire philosophy as to how he substitutes with this clock. There goes Branch driving, penetrating, hitting. Why right, Branch does have some moves, but you can tell he made up his mind there to penetrate and shoot. 48-33, 15-point lead, North Carolina, 8.35 remaining. Still man-for-man -man pressure by Maryland. Backdoor cut by Braddock, can't hold it. Walks. 
How many times tonight have we seen a fella fumble a pass on the backdoor situation because you got to catch it first before you can make a play? That's a tough catch, though, Bill. Very right tough catch. But that's the key. Catch the ball. If you can't get the shot, you can always bring it back outside. 48-33. That's the North Carolina lead. Here goes Rivers from the outside. Ball carries out to Braddock. North Carolina on the move. Inside. Deb Barlow draws Gonna the get two. Ball. Great fake. Uh, Pittman just hung in the air and had uh, nowhere to go. We talked about earlier. You want to put the shot when you realize you're going to be fouled. Put that shot up. Just pretend it obviously it had no chance to go in, but he gets a two-shot foul, and obviously he'd have been in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That would have been number seven, right, Jim? Well, no, it was only the fourth against Only the fourth. Okay, so he actually wouldn't have even gotten any shots, and this way he gets two. Well, right, he's producing his points. There's the first one, and now he gets the second one. Played at Lewisburg uh, Junior College. Rebound stolen away by Jordan. Pittman couldn't handle it. Michael Jordan comes up with a loose ball. Matt Doherty driving with a good uh, jump stop. Rebound by Baldwin. Maryland on the race. Trailing by uh, 16 points. There goes Branch again. Baseline stop. And Baldwin is there for the follow. First basket by Taylor Baldwin. 49-35. Maryland trail by 19. They've cut it to 14. Down the middle. Braddock charges again. Gets up in the air. Good job again by Taylor Baldwin. So Maryland has cut off the inside driving, and that'll be the seventh foul. And now we'll go to the bonus for Maryland. So the Terps got to figure they're not out of it yet. With 7.35 to go, we're getting a timeout on the action with a score. North Carolina, 49, Maryland, 35. And let's pause for these messages. Jim, I hadn't read that. Of course, he had had that problem, and he's now probably going to redshirt and uh, and be able to come back next year because he did not, I don't believe, play enough basketball games. I don't think they made that commitment, Bills. I understand they did make the surgery today on the knee. They say he may be out uh, for four or five games, but it's, it's going to be kind of a week-to-week -week proposition whether he comes back or not, but you may be right. Totally unnecessary injury. I don't know if you realize it, but he was wide open. All he had to do is lay the ball in the basket. He went up for that little extra dunk and came down in an unusual position and uh, now obviously could uh, be out for the year. One of, you mentioned going down to Clemson to play. How would you like to go in there to play this week when they're going to invite back that national championship oh football team on that court? It'll be unbelievable, the crowd noise in that place. Well, look at the second half shooting. Maryland shooting 72%. They're not even in the game at the moment. Jim, here's the four corners. In a, in a certain way, they started off and spread it, put Jimmy Black down in the middle. It's not four corners as they used to play. It's Much, a delay game, though. Yep, it's a delay game. Black playing in the middle. Looking for the back door. There See it is, ya. Doherty. Yep. Goodbye. Back door cut by Matt Doherty. And North Carolina now goes up 16 with seven minutes to go at 51-35. Everybody who's ever played well defensively against the four corners or any of its offshoots has to play solid man-to-man -man defense. Great stuff inside by Pittman and a beautiful pass from Morley. And there's an example of Morley's great gift of passing. Second basket by Pittman. Of course, he had to step in some shoes he didn't expect to fill. But, uh, well, he would have... Right, he would have been the secondary rebounder, obviously, with Buck in there. Now he's got to be a primary rebounder. Quite a difference. Played against Buck in high school. They were both high schoolers down at Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Went to different schools. 51-37, North Carolina up by 14. They've got it spread here looking for the backdoor cut. I can remember when North Carolina started that four corners business and you had guys like Rusty Clark that they tried to keep away from the ball, protect him. But now they have all active players in the big lineup. Guys like Perkins and Worthy, they're not sitting out in the corner to protect them. If they get the ball, they can do something with it out there. Well, not only are they are uh, a good uh, percentage with the ball, but they are a threat with it. Doherty did a good job of retrieving the loose ball. Uh, Worthy's back in there with four fouls. He almost took his one-on-one -on -one move right there. Maryland sticking to straight men for man. It's about the only way you can defense this kind of a game. Oh, uh, Brass trying to draw the foul, and Doherty almost got an open lane to the basket. Maryland playing straight, tough man to man. You've got to stop your guy. There's not a lot of room to turn backs and double team because they have it spread out so much across the court that there's not room for that. 
Kind of a clear out now for Worthy. Uh, Jordan is also very active, as is Perkins, and drives with the basket. Worthy's looking to take Pittman one of these times with a dribble on the baseline. North Carolina's up by 14 and running down the clock here with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Tar Heels have a perfect record this year, 9-0, number one in the nation. They haven't taken on that many weak team and weak sisters. No, Jim, they've played a very tough schedule, both home and on the road. Talking about some good ball clubs that have top records. I saw Missouri play out on the West Coast. That's a very intelligent, talented basketball team. It's also undefeated right now. But they still have Stepanovic as one of the best big men in the country a few years ago. And now they've called a foul. It's going to be a charge, I think, to Branch. That was off the ball, and they caught Branch for holding. That'll be his fourth foul. You notice how James Worthy gave the ball to the official that time? No two-handed chest pass. <laughs> he carried it over there and put it in his lap. Worthy is, is, is kind of a low-key guy, Bill. Well, he is it's a very low-key guy. I think he was kind of uh, upset with himself, and uh, and that two-handed chest pass, maybe for normal people, uh, wouldn't have been too bad, but the way he throws it, it almost knocked the official over. Pete Holbert coming in for the first time for Maryland. He's a good outside shooter, and since North Carolina has gone to a zone defense, that's kind of part of their strategy here once they go to the delay. They'll also play zone force. You shoot the long shot, so lefties come back with Pete Holbert in his lineup for Maryland. And, Jim, it's very tough defensively when you know you have to go out and play your guy nose-to-nose, -nose, so you wear out in a hurry on the defensive end. 53-37. North Carolina commanding lead. And in the zone, four and a half to go. Nice pass by Morley. Marty, there's Holbert, but North Carolina quickly open. They leave Dutch Morley open, and he jumps on it. Morley's first basket. He is noted as a shooter. And a wild pass, which uh, Dean Smith, of course, didn't want. Now, he didn't want the pass, but there again, Jordan, who's such an incredible athlete, Jimmy Black figured he'll get the ball if I throw it up there high enough, but Jordan took his eye off. That's about the fourth time tonight a guy has taken his eye off a pass. It would have been a tough catch, but could have been him. There goes Morley again. Two in a row. Yep. Dutch Morley. Suddenly's turned shooter for Maryland. It's 53-41. So they've gone from 19 down to 12 with still four minutes to go. Doherty drives on Pittman, scores. He'll Good get count. a charge. Basket will count for Doherty. He'll also pick up personal foul number three. Doherty down on the floor. Well, it's got to give you a pause. I remember last year he fell in a movie theater. Was out for a considerable period of time. Good call by the official. Boy, he really went down, hitting uh, the back of right his spine. Right on the base of his spine. He heard his hand was it last year, though, in the movie. Yes. Ball. Thumb. Yep. Jim, some of the other places around the country where they're really playing some good basketball, the Southwest Conference is something that's got to be reckoned with. Texas, well, Abe Lemons has got him going. Arkansas got upset in the league. You've got Houston playing very well. And, of course, that Rice Ball uh -huh. Club that beat... Uh, North Carolina State and, and did so well out in the Rainbow Classic. Also beat San Francisco. Right. So it's two big wins for them. That's true. The Southwest Conference you know, went to a tournament a few years ago, Bill, so maybe that's keyed them on. Well, right here at Coalfield House with a score, North Carolina 55, Maryland 41. Let's pause for these messages from your local station. Point lead and less than four minutes to go, 3.58. And Jim, remember that long pass by Jimmy Black before down there to, to Michael Jordan that was fumbled away. Normally with a with a spread where you're three up or five up, that pass obviously becomes a very bad pass. But when you have this kind of a working margin, it's the kind of thing that you might take a gamble on. Ball a shot coming to Pippen. I think it points out very vividly the building job that uh, faced Lefty this year, and you consider that Pittman was the leading scorer coming back from last year's team, and he averaged five points a game. Oh, they lost about 75% of their total offensive output. Pittman and Beal, two starters in the first half in the front line, did not score. That shows uh, a real problem of inside ability and punch. North Carolina's basketball, they have a 13-point lead, 55-42. Tar Heels are winning the game, but it has not been an exactly a cakewalk here against a hard-fighting Maryland team. One that doesn't have the wealth of talent that it's had in the past. Played well tonight. Now they are spread it out. That's the old four corners here, Bill. Yes, it is. And, of course, Jimmy Black has got too much quick quickness for Atkins. If he gets in there, look out for the... <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan. 
All right, many freshmen of the country better than that, huh? 57-42. Long one by Atkins. And there's Gordy to get it for North Carolina. Had what Worthy open didn't see him. He didn't see him because uh, he would have fired that ball for James Worthy. 57-42. Leads now 15 for North Carolina. There's a reach-in foul by Atkins. Much too much quickness uh, for Black on Atkins out there, so he's just trying to hang on. Cannot come out and press him. North Carolina, though, will get a challenge in the league this year. Virginia, of course, uh, second in the nation. Still have Ralph Sampson and a much different type ball club this year. Lamps gone, Rakers gone, but they're quicker, Bill. They are quicker. Their freshmen are blending in very nicely. They really haven't been tested that much uh, so far this year with their schedule. Uh, although, I'll tell you what, playing a James Madison club is a very underrated team, well coached, and they've given Virginia a real rough time. Made it to, uh, of course, the NCAA last year. But I'll be anxious to see how they do not only tonight, but also in that game Saturday. And then, of course, NC State has already established itself as a definite challenger this year. And then don't overlook Clemson or Wake Forest, depending on how uh, Rodgers might uh, affect them by being out. You notice how North Carolina now has put that zone way back inside the foul line. Brands a good penetration, but he got the shot blocked by Perkins. There's the time. Less than three minutes to go. North Carolina up 17, headed toward victory number 10 in a row. The zone is really packed in. They're going to want Maryland to put that ball up outside. Be in good position for rebounders. They'll give up that shot. Branch and Torty controls. Loose ball goes out of bounds to Maryland. It's a tough week facing North Carolina, Bill, because not only they have Virginia coming up this weekend, but one week from tonight they take on NC State. Another one of our television games. That uh, could be a very pivotal game. Stolen away by Worthy. North Carolina comes up with another turnover. Two and a half minutes on the clock, and they're up by 17. A dangerous pass by James Worthy to throw a bounce pass cross court underneath the other team's basket. Got away with it though. Four corner spread by North Carolina. Jimmy Block dishing off, looking for the backdoor cut. He won five Allen seconds. Hurry. There it is. It'll be Maryland. No, it'll be North Carolina's ball. What was, for me. Jim, what was interesting there? Jimmy Black wanted the back door. It wasn't there. So rather than make the easy pass. Maybe also, let's give him some credit, he might have realized that his ball club had their turn to take the ball out of bounds. So go ahead, rather than throw the ball away, accept the jump ball situation because you're going to get it right back. Well, I think Coach is already beginning to use that strategy, but I think the uh, point you made earlier, that's what story here, that things are going to change at least on that situation next year. I think they're going to give it the defense. Jordan inside, undercut foul, may get two. Jordan went up for his 10th point of the second half and was fouled on the play by Pittman. The kids in today's basketball go up so high. Look at this play by Jordan. Uh, let's see if they give him two shots. It was uh, could be ruled an undercut. I really didn't think Pittman undercut him, Jim. I Maybe thought that not. he, you know, he got over there. He was trying to defend on the play. Michael Jordan just has that ability to go up so high. He's able to get the shot off. Let's see if they're going for one or two, but I, I really don't think that was an undercut. One shot. One, you're right. Well, I think next year at least, Bill, when they tie somebody up for the five-second call on jump ball, I think they will give it the defense, regardless of whose turn it is. I believe so. 62-42. There's North Carolina's biggest lead, 20 points, with two minutes to go in the game. Another outstanding performance by the nation's number one ranked team, University of North Carolina. And in come the substitutes. Buzz Peterson, the freshman from Asheville, is in. Jimmy Braddock returns to lead the front line intact. Doherty, Perkins, and Worthy. And now back in comes Jeff Barlow. Out will go Doherty. Brust comes in for Perkins. And Worthy's the only starter remaining on the court. And he's going to go out right now as Cecil Exum, the sophomore, comes up. Jim and Peterson, North Carolina had an outstanding recruit. He, of course, uh, was out and lost an awful lot of valuable time. His team that puts in so much uh, offense and defensively, if you miss that much practice time, you have a hard time readjusting. But he'll be an outstanding player there also. There goes Jeff Atkins under pressure. Rebound tipped on the outside by Field. Couldn't control it. Now Braddock comes down for North Carolina with less than two minutes to go. 20-point lead for the Tar Heels. Of course, they're right back into their offense now. This is not the delay game at all. There goes Barlow down inside, hit the rim, and a loose ball picked off by Pippen. 
That's why you should be able to shoot with both the right and the left hand. He's all a left hand and needed the right hand on that play, and it just wasn't there in his repertoire. There goes Peel spinning inside. Tough break, but Pittman puts it in. Seven point all in the second half by Charlie Pittman. Now a minute 20 to go. 18 point lead by North Carolina. There's a foul outside by Atkins. Atkins needs a breather too, Bill. Now he's tired. He's been going both ends. He's really not a, a quick kid. He's the kind of guy that maybe weights would help a great deal in the offseason to build him up, get his stamina up, and also give him some physical power. Well, Metro Sports is happy to welcome new station to the ACC Basketball Network. WRIP in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Well, they'll be watching Braddock Hill with some interest. He's a hometown boy from Chattanooga. Atkins yep. is battling. Yep, back to Pete Holbert. He's a good shooter, remember. Little short. Rebound, excellent watch. Try to do a little tightrope there on the baseline. One minute, six seconds to go in the game. North Carolina now has sewed up its 10th consecutive rim. Beal is fouled on the play. Fouls on Chris Cross. His first. This will send Beal to the free throw line. Beal at the line. Herman got off to a fine start this year. Led the ACC's uh, rebounding in the early part of December. Second out of Ralph Sampson. He's 9.7. His third point. Of course, he was up against Worthy early in the ball game, Jim, and I think that they kind of shocked it a little bit when he went up against Worthy to see what uh, physical talent he was in against, and he was shut out the entire first half. All out pressure by Maryland, and Exum now will get it across the line. Knocked down by Branch. And Peterson is loose. I, that oh, foul was blocked up saw by <laughs> Pittman. Put up by Barlow and he's fouled with 43 seconds to go. Pittman, Pittman blocks that yes, shot. Yes, sir. He got a piece of that. I don't know if it was goaltending or not. Awful close. Well, the McDonald's player of the game from the University of North Carolina will be Sam Perkins, who was just outstanding with 23 points. And from the University of Maryland, Freshman Adrian Branch will wind up uh, close to 20. Right now he has 16. Congratulations to both. On that occasion, Barlow being left-handed was in the right position to go ahead and get the shot off. Fast break. Here comes Branch with 40 seconds to go. Branch on the inside collides with Barlow who blocks him. First foul on Barlow and Branch will go to the line. This time we'd like to thank the staffs of these two fine universities for their assistance in tonight's telecast. The University of North Carolina Athletic Director John Swafford, Head Basketball Coach Dean Smith and Sports Information Director Rick Brewer. And from the University of Maryland, Athletic Director Richard M. Dull, Head Basketball Coach Charles G. Lefty Brazil and Sports Information Director Jack Zane. Branch of the line. He was our player of the game for Maryland and Sam Perkins for the University of North Carolina. Tim, I think Adrian Branch is going to be quite a scoring machine before he gets out of the collegiate ranks. He has the ability to shoot from the outside, penetrates well. Might have to pick up his defensive structure and his total overall concept of the game, but he really can score. I think his discipline will come along as uh, he gets in the flow of ACC ball. He sometimes plays a little bit out of control. Beal inside puts up a shot again and will have a jump ball situation. And of course, this, Maryland's ball. This time now to be Maryland's ball because of the turn, although the North Carolina fella created a good defensive play. 33 seconds to go. There's the time, top of your screen. North Carolina's put this one from out of reach for Maryland, but Maryland still battling. Ball blocked out of bounds on uh, Branch's drive. And there is what I was talking about, his overall play. There really not, was nothing there. He's going out for the scoring right now, which, of course, you're trying to put the ball up quickly. Jeff Adkins, underhand flip, kept alive by Branch, but goes out of bounds, touched last by North Carolina. Still be Maryland's ball. 23 seconds remaining. And there goes uh, Morley. Morley connects his seventh point of this half. 20 seconds to go, and Maryland kills the clock. They'll have one timeout remaining with 20 seconds to go. Maryland wants to get it a little closer if possible. 
It is 64 50, and we'll be back with the first half statistics after these messages from your local station. Even if Lip. That foul was on Dutch Morley. That'll send Cecil Exum will go to the line for North Carolina. 19 seconds to go. That play took only one second off the clock. Jim, we, we don't have an update on that uh, Rutgers Duke score, but it'd be interesting to see uh, see that ball game or a replay of it if that was a, a, an accurate score at halftime, which we were given. Amazing to think of a college team only having seven points at halftime, which was the case for Rutgers. Well, judging the update, it's quite possible that's what it was. Jeff Atkins over his head. Crazy shot. Just trying to get the ball in the play. Exum fades it out. Here's Here comes Robinson. Linwood Robinson. Return pass to Exum, scores with four seconds to go. Double pump. 16-point lead. Backcourt. Stolen by Robinson, but well, that'll end the action. It's all over. North Carolina, the nation's number one ranked team, wins impressively again, this time by 16 points over hard-fighting Maryland at Coalfield House before a sellout crowd of 14 and a half thousand. To a 12-0 start, ranked right second in the nation. This afternoon, the Cavaliers go against six-foot-nine sophomore Sam Perkins and the 10-0 top-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. Today, both Perkins and Sampson vie for number one as they go head-on here at Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Today, it's the capital of college basketball. C Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball. Today, from Carmichael Auditorium in Chapel Hill, it's the Virginia Cavaliers versus the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser.